So I've wanted to do this video for quite some time, but the main thing holding me back was that I wanted to do it right. I want to have all of the information 100% correct, and I want to explain it in a very clear way. And I think that I've managed to do that here today. So if you do find this video helpful, go ahead and hit a like and uh, share it with all your friends who want mutations. And yeah, let's go. Let's get into it. So what are mutations in ARC? They are variations in the offspring, and they can come in two forms. They can come in a color mutation or a stat mutation. We'll go over the two of these in more detail in a second. It's worth mentioning that when you actually do get a mutation, you get a stat mutation and a color mutation every single time. The simple way of getting mutations is breeding. Honestly, like, there's no real trick to it. You just need to breed creatures. You're not going to get mutations unless you breed them. And while you're breeding them, there's really nothing you can do to further the chances of actually getting mutations. So breed your creatures and you'll get them eventually. But you'll also need to be keeping track of a lot of things if you want to do it properly. And we're going to go over that in more detail in this video. I should also mention that there is an item in S plus that can actually force mutations. It's called the S plus mutator. Uh, it, you essentially just give it like 10 element to power it and it gives like a pulse and it makes mutations happen on creatures that are breeding. I personally don't really like using this because I find it to be quite cheaty, but if you want to just mess around with the mutations or whatever and you have access to S+, plus, then go ahead. I mentioned how there are two different types of mutations. You have your stat mutations and you have your color mutations. A stat mutation is simply just bonus points put into a stat, and a color mutation is simply just a different color that does not appear on the parents. And um, we're going to go over the color mutations first, but first, before that, let's talk about color regions. Every single creature in Ark has up to six color regions. Well, technically every single creature has six color regions, but not all of those creatures show all six of their color regions. That may sound a little bit confusing, but let me show you some examples. So, an example of a creature that shows all six is the Dodo. Dodo shows all six color regions, Stego as well, Quetzal as well. Some creatures can show as little as two, though, like the Dire Bear or the Megatherium. I personally would say that most creatures show between three or four color regions on average. So when you get mutations, the color variation can land on any one of these regions. It can even land on one of the ones that do not show. So sometimes you might breed creatures and then you'll see, hey, it's mutated, like, because you go into the family tree and see that. And then you'll look at it and you'll be like, hey, it doesn't have... Like, it, it doesn't have any cool colors, it's not different from the parents, and that's because it landed on a color region that does not show. Um, so if you're breeding with creatures like a dodo, whenever you get a mutation, you're gonna definitely get a color variation. And if you're breeding with something like a dire bear, you have two regions, so that's two out of six chance of actually getting a variation in color every single time you get a mutation. Creatures like that, you'll find it's a little less likely to actually get a cool color, on top of the fact that you're getting a mutation, then it's landing specifically on a region that you're looking for, and it's a cool color that you want. It's very unlikely, but obviously it can still happen. So when the wheel spins and you're getting your mutation, the color variation can be one of 56 different colors. That's right. There's a list of 56 colors, and it could be any one of those. It could even be a color that the creature can naturally spawn with, which generally sucks, and that's why when you see people with mutations, they're all like really cool, like blues or greens or something like that. That's because that stuff looks cool on the creature. And that stuff usually is not common in the wild. So that pretty much explains what color mutations are. There is the other side of the coin, which is stat mutations. Now, stat mutations are a little bit more complicated. So when you breed two creatures together, the offspring will always come out with a mixture of the male and the female's tamed stats leveling and then breeding doesn't increase the baby's stats. So when a mutation occurs, you'll actually get extra points into one of these stats that it got from the parents. And it's easy to identify it sometimes if you're keeping track of what the parents teamed out as. So I'd recommend that if you're taming stuff, go ahead and just jot down all of the stats from the parents. It's really easy to do. You could easily do it in game if you don't want to actually take out a piece of paper and write that down. Or you could just take screenshots, which is also really handy. When you get a mutation, you 100% get a color mutation and a stat mutation. But like I mentioned, sometimes the color mutations don't show because they land on a region that just doesn't show color for that creature. So the exact same thing can actually happen with stat mutations. There is one stat that every single creature has that if the stat mutation lands on that, it just does not show. And that is movement speed. Movement speed cannot be increased with mutations. It can land on the 
on the movement speed but it doesn't actually increase so when you do have a mutation and it looks like none of the stats are changed that means that it simply just landed onto the movement speed which honestly sucks the worst possible case for a creature is if it has a mutation and it doesn't have a color variation and it's it's mutation for the stat landed onto the movement speed that right there is a mutation that is essentially not a mutation but it's possible so now I've gone over what mutations actually are, the color mutations, the stat mutations. Um, so hopefully I explained that quite well. And uh, let's move on to the next subject. So the next subject is stacking mutations and breeding up super dinos. So let's go through the different steps that are involved in actually doing this. So before I actually go through the steps, I want to explain the purpose of stacking mutations. Like, why do you need to do this? Well... When you look at a creature, you can click on its ancestry and you can see its family tree. On either side, you will have a number. It will say 0 out of 20. That means that it is unmutated. Once you get one mutation, it will say on either side 1 out of 20. If the number goes over 20, it can't be mutated on that side. So say, for example, both sides say numbers that are over 20. So let's just say 40 on each side. It can't actually get mutations. There is, however, a way of not really cheating the system, but going around it. And you can have a crazy number on one side, like a thousand plus and zero on the other side. It's possible to do. And that's what I'm really going to go over the actual steps and the method to actually doing that. So first of all, you want to tame lots of whatever creature you're looking to stack mutations onto. Now, Whatever you're looking for, you might be looking for Rexes. Rex is obviously a common one. If you're looking to fight bosses, you want really good Rexes, so it's a good creature to start stacking mutations on. So we're going to use Rexes for our example right here. So go out, tame as many high-level Rexes as you can. Anything that, it doesn't have to be max level, it can be close to max level, but I wouldn't go out and tame like the lowest levels and try to get the good stats out of them too. It doesn't really work that way, but anything that's kind of close to max level up to max level would be worth getting. Another thing I should mention is it's probably easier if you just don't level any of these creatures, but if you want to level them, take screenshots of their stats before you leveled. Once you're happy with the bunch of creatures that you have tamed, go ahead and line them all up and go through all of their stats. You want to locate the best health. If you're using a Rex, probably the best stam as well. Uh, maybe even the best weight, the best melee. There's some stats that you can ignore, like oxygen. It's not necessary, but if you want to, you can try to get the best oxygen out of all the Rexes that you've tamed or even the food as well. Um, so go ahead and just line up all the Rexes, figure out which one has the best health, and what you want to do is just go through and name that one health, or if it has the best health and the best melee, name it health and melee. So after you've went through every single Rex or whatever creature you have, and you've located all the best stats, separate those ones away from all the other ones. At this point, you actually don't need those other ones. So you can kill them if you want to. You can use them for other purposes if you want to. You can donate them to somebody. Whatever you want to do, just don't include those in the rest of the process. So the next task is to combine these stats together. And the way to do that is breeding. You want to simply just breed whatever creatures you have. So in our example, let's say we have one with the best health, one with the best stamina, and then we have a third Rex that has the best weight and melee. Now, the health one is a female, and the other two are males, so we're going to have to take this one step at a time. We're going to need to breed one of them with the female health one, and we could choose either one that we want to, so let's start with the stamina one. So we're going to breed health and stamina together, and basically what you want to do is just keep breeding them until you have a baby that is the opposite gender of whatever you're looking for. So because our third Rex that we need to combine the stats into is a male we're gonna need a female offspring with the two stats at this point you do not want to be imprinting the offspring it's a lot easier if you don't you can if you want to but it just makes your life harder so i'd recommend that you just don't do it don't level them when they fully grow up either uh, it just makes it a lot easier so something can happen while you're doing all this and that is a mutation i personally would recommend that if you get a mutation don't continue to use that in this process. You're not going to be able to do all of this correctly, and it's just kind of going to mess things up a little bit. So I'd recommend that if you get a mutation, you don't have to kill it. You can put it aside and use it for other purposes. So in the end of all this, what you're really looking for is the combined stats of all your best creatures in a male and a female. Unmutated, don't imprint them, don't level them, literally just raise them up make sure that they're safe and these are going to be your main two breeding creatures so what i like to do is name them perfect f on the female and perfect m on the male to basically just say to people 
yeah, these are my two main creatures. These are the best ones that we're going to be breeding with. And essentially, this is what we're going to use to start off our mutations. So at this point, we're going to have our perfect F and our perfect M. All creatures up to this point do not matter. You can scrap them. You can do whatever the hell you want with them. Just don't continue to use them in this process. Now, we're simply just going to breed these two creatures together. They are going to be the main focal point of our whole mutation stacking process. So from here on out, whenever you're hatching up the babies, they're all going to come out with the exact same level as the parents. Or if they have a mutation, they're going to come out with an extra two. So say if our Rexes are level 290, and whenever we get a mutation, they're always going to come out as 292. A double mutation, a 294, and so on and so forth. If for some reason your creatures are coming out with random levels all the time, that means that you didn't do something right. And that means that you might need to go back and rebreed creatures till you have two identical creatures, a male and a female, for this process. So when we're getting mutations, and obviously the creature is going to be a higher level than the parents, and we're doing everything correctly, we want to be checking to see what stat the mutation is on. And obviously an easy way of doing that is just keeping track of what the parent stats are. That's why we didn't level them or imprint them or anything. That way we can see exactly what they should be coming out with and compare and see what our mutation actually is. So once we get a mutation on a stat that we actually like, which is say melee, melee is really handy for Rexes. We want to go ahead and name that baby 1M, one melee, obviously. And we want to raise that one up. Now let's say that that baby was a male. Once it's fully raised up, what we want to be doing is we want to be taking that baby and slotting it in the place of the father. So from this point, we want to be breeding the baby with its mom. Sounds a little bit sick, I know, but trust me, this is the best way to do it. So from this point, we have a 292 male mutated creature and a unmutated 290 female creature. Now, when you're breeding these creatures together, occasionally you'll see that it just comes out as a 290. And that's not because it's not mutated. Technically, if you look at its family tree, it is mutated. It just doesn't have the mutation on it. Um, now, essentially from this point, what we're going to be really looking for is a 294 because every single time you get a mutation, remember, like I said, it gets an extra two levels into a stat and it obviously gets an extra two levels onto the parent stat. So what we're looking for is a baby from these two that is going to be a 294 because that means that it will have the father's mutation along with another mutation stacked on top. And obviously we want to easily be like checking to see what those mutations are as they come out. So we're going to raise up this baby obviously have it named accordingly or whatever do not imprint do not level simple stuff uh and then we want to essentially slot that into the breeding process so let's say that this one was a female so the double mutation is a female we want to take away the one mutation male we actually don't need that one anymore provided we keep this double mutation one safe we don't need that other one anymore so we can throw that to the side do whatever the hell you want with it we want to go ahead and put this double mutation one there. And obviously our other non-mutated creature is a female. So we're going to need to bring that male back in and put the female on the sidelines. This is the way of doing it. You're getting the two perfect creatures. You're breeding them together. You're getting a mutation. You're replacing the parent, whichever gender it is, with that mutation. And then you're breeding again, getting another mutation, replacing honestly this is how it's done it's kind of tedious and to some people may seem kind of a little bit confusing but you're essentially just tiptoeing your way up the line of mutations and stacking them on top and that is how you do it okay so that is it for this video i hope that you guys found it helpful and i really uh, i really hope that everything in it is 100 correct because i have made mistakes in the past and i do not want to repeat that i want to put out the correct information and I do not want any confusion. So yeah, if you have enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit a like. Uh, if you want to see more like this, you can, of course, subscribe. I do mutations all the time. So if you're looking for that type of content, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. But uh, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next one.